Hey guys, so today what I'm going to be doing is talking about Objection Handling 101. So I've prepared a Google document, so I'm going to be looking at this and kind of walking you through exactly how we do Objection Handling. Um, now this video, it's going to be pretty pretty in-depth. Um, I'm going to keep it to a beginner to intermediate level. Uh, I think we're going to have a subsequent video or subsequent module in the program that's going to talk about like more advanced. So what are we going to be covering on the call? Number one, we'll be talking about like what are the four stages of objection handling after the price drop? What are the factors in successfully handling an objection? Next is how to actually do what's called a reframe. We're going to explain what a reframe means in a minute. I'm going to give you some very simple objection handling um, frameworks. Next, we'll be talking about the different the six different objection classes. We're also going to be talking about like how to negotiate, then how to bring up a close, like what is the process of closing the stage of closing. So let's dive into this thing without further ado. Subject channeling 101, how to get people to sign up with you, even if you aren't a salesperson. Okay. So number one, my name is Bryce. And basically, we're basically what, who am I and why I could like this video help you? So currently I run a six-figure accounting and bookkeeping firm, which I started in 2015. And I've helped over, this number is actually incorrect at this point. It's about 200. Um, it's getting close to like 300 at this point. Um, 298, 299 people starting growth. I think we had a person join this morning. Um, so it might be close to like 300 at this point. But why am I making this video and sharing it for free? So I'm remaking the module, my training program, and I'm brainstorming it out like in the open here to see if there are like any things that are like unclear. Because sometimes like people will ask something in the comment, which kind of like, oh, I didn't explain that properly. or I didn't explain it as thoroughly as what I could. So I want to put it out here just to kind of see how it goes. And then once I see there are like not really any unclear areas anymore, I put it inside of our training module. So the second reason is I'm trying to give you a preview into an aspect and one aspect of what it's like to join our program. So it's like, if you like these videos, if you learn something new, then in a lot of cases, people come and join our program. It's, it's one of those things I've kind of learned. It's like the more that you kind of give to people, the more that they want to either work with you or reciprocate, right? And like, you know, most people who are in business, if they just like are out just taking stuff, taking stuff, taking stuff, and they never like, you know, either give back or never like, you know, um, do stuff, they generally don't make it very far. So I make these videos, people who are like me, who, you know, you give stuff out, they return and, um, you know, and reciprocate. So also, if you want some help starting your business or maybe even growing your business, like maybe maybe you're thinking about starting, but you're just kind of overwhelmed by all the different like avenues you could do and all the different things that you should do in order to grow your business. Or maybe you already have a business. It's just not quite taken off the way that you expected or hoped. Um, go ahead and click on the link inside the description below. I'd love to walk you through our proven process and see if it's a good fit for our you know training program for you to join. So let's kind of jump into this thing. So before we get into like objection handling, we're going to talk about closing versus selling versus presenting versus being salesy. Okay. Closing is a process of you where whereby you get someone to make a very clear decision. Selling is when you're just the overall principle of like what it's called. And so we will get a little bit uncomfortable. I'm going to actually address what's salesy in a couple seconds. Um, next thing we're presenting, that's basically when you share exactly how you're going to help the person out. And like the presentation we give all the students in our program. After that is going to be salesy. Okay, so salesy just means like pressure. It's unwanted sales pressure for someone who just can't take the hint that you're not interested. So let me talk about how to distinguish all these different things by the end of this video. So number one, closing does not just happen when you are doing your objection handling, right? It starts from the time you open your mouth on the call. And we have other videos to break this down. So like when I say open your mouth on the call, as soon as the person either picks up the phone or gets on the Zoom, you are being evaluated as to whether or not this person is going to work with you. So you need to make sure you come across very polished and that you have practiced the stuff you need to practice and your confidence level is at an appropriate spot. Now we can help you out with all these things. And if you're inside the program watching this, we have different modules to kind of teach you this stuff. So next thing, so first thing it's, the next place is going to be like, once you have explained your service and then all the steps moving down the pieces, now is the time to get into close. So we're going to skip the presentation because we, you know, we've covered this in a different video. So first things first, when you're going to be entering the close, it starts with a temperature check. A temperature check basically lets you see how far away you actually are from closing the sale. I'm going to close this side. I'm going to move this over. Cool. Mm -hmm. So let's give you some examples of some temperature checks. So I like using three different types of temperature checks. Number one is a one to 10 check based on this plan on a scale of like from one to 10, one being like you hate it, 
and being like, it's exactly what you need. I guess, what number do you kind of feel like you're at? So the goal is to have the person say above an eight. Okay, if they give you above an eight, I'd be like, nice, you know, what makes an eight for you, right? You're basically trying to get them to explain like, what do they actually like about the service? Why do they like the service? Um, and like, you know, what are the different like highlights they want, right? Because then that just kind of reinforces them that they actually like it. If it's below an eight, you need to ask like, you know, what's keeping it from being a 10 for you, right? Make sure you use a very curious tone. We're going to talk about tonality in a couple of minutes, but just, you know, pro tip, just use a curious tone, right? Don't, don't be accusatory. Don't say, oh man, this person doesn't want to buy. It's just figure out what it is. And then from there, you just handle it and you just like answer like the question. Basically, you handle the, we'll call it misconception. Often or miscommunication. So in a lot of cases at this stage, if you haven't set your price, it's just there's something that they just don't understand. Like maybe you said a word they don't understand. They don't understand like why you're why you're pricing on a flat rate rather than hourly. They might not understand like you know why why um you know you're doing a three step versus like a six step or why you choose to do a cleanup first rather than just doing ongoing services. Like there's a million different questions they could have. You never really know until you're like sitting in front of like the person because everyone kind of interprets data a little bit differently. So. This gives it a chance to kind of handle it become it before it actually becomes an issue, right? Because like before the price, you guys are just talking. It's just a conversation. After you drop the price, that's when people kind of start feeling a little bit of like pressure. So you need to make sure you can like take away as many of their like misconceptions and miscommunications before you drop your price as you possibly can. Next thing, next type of temp check will be like answer for certainty. So basically, based on this plan, I mean, do you feel this could be the answer for you? So I like doing the word could be putting emphasis on the word like you know could be the answer for you right and you're listening for certainty like yes or yeah dude this is definitely versus eh i don't know uh potentially possibly right and like the, the one challenge is if you are not a very a very um firm, direct person, you're oftentimes going to elicit a lot of wishy-washy answers. So for example, one thing I say on all the consultation calls for someone to join the program, right, is like how you enter our program is how you're going to be selling. So if you're a person where you're like, oh, I'm kind of on the fence, or you kind of like dabble, or maybe you're just not very certain, when you start doing your consultation calls, you're generally going to be very, very uncertain. It's, it's no surprise a lot of people don't get like certainty, right? It's like, it's just whatever you're, however you talk to people is generally how they're going to do it. Because if you're leading the conversation, they're going to start mirroring you. So if you're very uncertain, if you are very um, kind of. Cool. So that's the next one I like doing all about certainty. Okay. Certainty is very cool. This one is a little bit more, I, I would consider this kind of like intermediate to advanced, right? Because you, you it doesn't really give you an understanding of how far away they are or what degree of certainty. So if, if you're more of a beginner, I'd probably use a one to 10 because then like if someone gives you like a three, it's like, Oh, they're 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 just not interested. It's very far away from being closed. Versus they're like a nine or a ten. It's like okay, yeah, this person definitely like really wants to get started with this thing. And it just gives you more confidence and more accuracy into how to close. Versus if you do like the answer, like is it the answer for you with certainty? Um, that can be a little bit tough because if you misinterpret what they say about it being the answer for them, and you think it's like a, a you know, a heck yes, when it's really like a. a I don't know, you're going to kind of handle the situation a little bit differently and it causes you to miss the close a lot more. Next is going to be like, you know, when are you thinking about getting started? I like doing this. This this used to be like my favorite one for like a long time. When are you thinking about getting started? Because it gives you like right away or like uh, maybe in six, 12 months. And it's it's kind of like um, a certainty, but it's also a timing thing, right? Because if they say like right in tomorrow or today or right now, it's like, okay, cool. So I can use that as a... Um, I can use that as an agreement that we just have. You can utilize a little bit in a couple of minutes when you're closing, right? Because if they say, I'm getting started right now. And then you drop the price. And now they say, oh, maybe in six years, six weeks, six days, six trillion years. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, there, there's something off. So that means something has shifted. That means, you know, you have to do some objection handling.
Okay, but at least they're interested in this, right? The goal of the temperature check is for you guys to have a mutual agreement that states that, like, hey, this is a thing for you in order to be able to like handle it. Uh, cool. Going back up to this, like, one to ten, if someone gives you below an eight, you need to say, like, you know, what's keeping it from being a ten, and then based on that, handle those misconceptions. I believe I said that, but I don't know exactly um, if it was very clear. Next is going to be the four stage of objection handling after the price drop. Okay, so let's say, okay, so your price dropped just, you know, $5,000 a month, right? Okay, when you drop your price, just say it very normally, just like you can have like a, uh, your mouth just like be normal. It doesn't have to be a smile, it doesn't have to be a frown. It can just be you just having a neutral face. If you get nervous when you say something, do not keep talking. Just say your price and just stop talking. From there, what you can do is you can either put your hand over your mouth if you get very nervous or you can drink some water. Um, drinking water worked for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you're doing a lot of consultation calls, like you just want to stay hydrated just in general. Number two, um, it prevents you from being able to actually speak, right? Because if you're drinking water, you can't be talking and drinking at the same time. So it's just like, it just prevents you from sabotaging at that point. Because in a lot of cases, they're going to be thinking to themselves or even thinking out loud. So your job is not to try and interrupt them and not to try and like win the conversation. Keep in mind, when you're closing, you're never trying to win the conversation or to sell the person. You are just trying to get complete clarity. You're trying to make sure there are no miscommunications and you're trying to make sure that they just have an understanding of like what are the consequences of them either making action or not making action so four stages of objection handling is smoke screen objection negotiation and close okay so let's talk about smoke screen one key mistake people make is that as soon as someone says something you immediately try and handle it like it's an objection and it just doesn't work right so you always have to understand what is the real objection so someone could say that's a lot of money okay $5,000 a month could be a lot of money depending on the person. It could be a little bit of money depending on the person, right? But does it mean they don't have the cash flow? Does it mean that they don't want to pay that much? Is that they can't pay that much? Is that they can't imagine paying that much money? If they have, if they are spending over a certain amount, they have to go talk to their board, the wife, the spouse, the dog. Um, they feel that maybe with the amount of money and the time they can dedicate, the amount of money is going to be wasted. Like there's a million different thought processes a person can have, right? So it's a smoke screen. So we have to see like what is the actual true objection class that we can utilize to then give our reframes and our word tracks, right? Because it's like miscommunications and what like a person wants makes it feel like you're lecturing them and that you sound like you're really out of touch and you have no idea what you're talking about, right? You can lose all credibility just from that one moment because like you just start like going on a tangent that the person doesn't really think about or care about, okay? So we're going to talk about objection handling word tracks, like the specific things to say in like one minute, but you have to make sure you understand exactly like which one of the word tracks to use in order to make it effective, right? Because like I have hundreds of different word tracks that I have, that I understand that I utilize and just in general, right? But I have to know which out of the hundred are the ones that are actually going to be effective for this particular space or conversation I'm having with the person right then and there. Okay, so probing, is this the real objection? So if someone says, you know, like, what is the price? Number one, you're, you're generally supposed to be probing, okay? So is this actually the real objections? After that, you're going to be thinking isolation. Are there any hidden objections? So maybe they said, okay, it's a lot of money. Okay, cool. But you also need to see, is it is it a lot of money plus they don't have the time to implement? Or is there a lot of money and they don't have the cash flow? Or is it a lot of money and they have to go speak to their board? Or is it just straight up, it's just a lot of money and that's the only thing, right? So we're isolating. Next is going to be, if they were to overcome this, would they actually be in a position to get started? And I like saying get started today or get started within like X, Y, Z. Like this is about a time frame. You put a, you put a time frame here. Um, I like putting, right? Because oftentimes like what, what can happen is that you might be able to overcome the objections, but they still might not be wanting to go today. I'm just trying to see like what a time frame is so I can know what to expect at the end. So if it's like they want to get started today, okay, we can get started today. If they want to get started tomorrow, okay, cool. We can dissect that. If it's three months, six months, I need to be as prepared as possible before I start trying to handle the objection in order to get all the information and have like a very clear picture. Because again, remember, it's about clarity. In order for us to get like help someone else become clear, you have to be clear on exactly what they're saying and what the specific situation is. And do not assume that you know what the specific situation is. Okay. So next, if at this stage of the game, right, it comes down to like the objections now. So let's say that you actually got the, you actually got all this stuff going. 
Next is like really just starting to dissect the objections. Like this is just a side tangent. If you've done your consultation call correctly, you'll only get like logical objections or very light um, questions. They won't be like, like you know, like, where'd you go to school? Let me see your website. Um, I don't think I can do it. It's just gonna be like very soft, just like, hey, this is kind of what we need from our end in order to get started. It just makes things really quickly. Now, again, these are easy because you can start closing with logic. Um, it's, it's really... Um, This is a typo. These are very easy again, because like you just close the logic. Um, cool. And we'll, we'll talk about this in a minute when it's when I say like clear into pants. Because most people like they might say like like some reflexive some reflexive stuff, like, oh, I might as well do it myself, right? In which case we can start talking about like how to logically handle that. So before we even go into that, factors that are going to be in place in order to successfully handle an objection. Number one is going to be your energy. Number two is going to be also just about having certainty. Another factor is about it's not about having a yes. Next is going to be it's also knowing that you'll have a ton of consultation calls each year. Okay, so you have to have certainty, just certainty that you can either do the job or you can learn how to do the job if you don't know exactly. Certainty that whatever price you say is the price that's meant to be at this moment in time. Even if you're even if you're underpricing, just own it. Just own it. You know, it doesn't matter if you overprice it, own it. If you underprice it, own it. You can always fix it afterwards or even like have another consultation call um, to talk about like uh, increasing the price if you underpriced it. Next, it's not about a yes. Remember, it's not about what you want. It's about what they want. It's just about making a very clear path and understand and see that all what we have is the path, the fastest path to get into what they want. Next, you're going to have a lot of consultation calls. Like if you're watching this and like you, you don't, you're not in our program or anything like that, like you might not have a lot of calls. So. I, I can understand why your energy might be like really desperate in that case. But if you're in our program and you have leads, like you're going to have a million of these calls, right? You're probably going to have anywhere between like um, anywhere between 50 to 200 of these calls per year. Excuse me. <clears throat> right. And more importantly, you have a means to keep getting as many consultations as you want. So it's like, so it's okay. And you're not spending any money on advertisements. So it doesn't matter if the person says yes, or they say no, like you're always going to have more. And next is going to be finding the correct objection, which we kind of just talked about a little bit. After that, we're going to talk about tonality. That's just the way that you kind of say things, um, whether you feel like you're leaning on the person, whether you feel like you're judging the person, or whether you feel like you're just a, a, an advisor to help them make a good decision. After that is word tracks. So keep in mind, I put these in order of like which is most important. So your energy is number one. Number two is find the actual like correct objection. Number three is how you say this, say the word tracks. Number four is the word tracks themselves, right? Because you can mess up a word track, but if you say it in the right way, if your energy is clear and certain, and if you're actually talking to the right objection, you'll close the deal, right? Um, so let's go into some logic-based objection handling for beginners without word tracks. Remember, it's not always about like just the word tracks. It's more about like how you say and making sure you're saying the right thing in order to actually make sure that we're going to close the deal. So basic level logical. This works for beginner business owners. Um, it also works for people you've built rapport with. So rapport means they've told you like three, basically level three or three-dimensional problems. That means inside of our um Inside of our question and answers in our script, we get like a number of different problems. We talk about like, what is the problem? How long is the problem going on? And how is the problem affecting you as a person, right? So level one is, is what's going on. Level two is how long it's been going on. Level three is going to be like how it's actually affecting you as a person, right? Because the more we can get about like personal understanding that, the easier it is for them to want to actually work with us and see us as a person who they can actually trust. Like right? they trust us to talk about these different things. We talk about life outside of business, right? Because you're not just selling a business service. You're really selling yourself and you're selling the relationship with that person. So be able to get those, it makes everything else easier. Okay, we have other modules inside of our training program that talk about how to go and like dig really, really deep into these three dimensional problems. Um, so I'm going to kind of like uh, move to the next step. So let's assume you have those. Next, it's going to be about urgency. Okay, so urgency is all about timing. A good example is a deadline. Now, there's a couple different types, right? So it could be like the business needs to get a loan, or they're going to get an audit. Or they need to have updated financials in order to go and get like more business credit or whatever, right? So 
that's a pretty easy deadline to have. Like, it's, it's a given. Like, they're going to tell you what that deadline is. If they don't have some kind of deadline built into it, I like using times of years, right? So, let's say for us, like, we have a lot of different deadlines when it comes to, like, taxes. Even if you don't do taxes, you're still a part of it, right? So, you're doing the cleanup so you can be prepared for the tax season, right? Or it just makes everything a lot easier, right? And these are very widely known and very widely generally accepted deadlines, so, for example, like right now, I'm filming this towards like the end of the year, right? So, there is a huge deadline, right? A lot of people want to pay for cleanups or they want to pay for like, you know, tax plans so that they can, you know, get a little bit of a write off by the end of the year, right? And it's like just something that's very there. Now, I always like to think of urgency almost like getting a stubborn child has to use the bathroom to go instead of wetting their pants. So, for example, um, we this is actually recent, um, our 12 year old. He, he, um, was basically, we're basically going to this like three hour drive, right? It was going to be from um, where I live in Ann Arbor to like Kalamazoo, um, to go and, um, visit some friends from, from, they go to, um, college out there. And basically when we were going to meet up with them, he, before we left, he was basically like dancing around, right? It's like, Hey, do you have to use the bathroom? Oh, I'm good. It's like, you're kind of dancing around. I, th I think you have to use the bathroom. Well, well, yeah, well, I'll hold it. And it's just like, well, you know, the car, it's like three hours and like 30 minutes, right? If you have to go now, you're probably going to have to, you know, go later, right? Well, no, 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 I think you can handle it. Well, dude, so, you know, you have a couple choices, right? Because, I mean, you're probably going to get in there. The seatbelt's going to be like on your bladder and you're really going to have to go. And like, you, you might end up having an accident and kind of like wet your pants, right? Well, and if you do that, like, you know, I'm kind of a mean parent, right? I, I told you what to do. So, you know, you have to kind of like live with your mistakes in life, right? So you're going to be sitting in, you know, in your urine for, you know, about an hour and a half, two hours, right? <laughs> so I guess, do you want to kind of hold it? Or do you want to kind of, you know, just do the easier thing? Use the bathroom now so you don't have to worry about this. He goes, okay, that makes sense. He goes, use the bathroom, right? But it's it's very logical, right? Because it's like there's a deadline, like there's there's an event that's coming up. And it's like if you can see that event, just keep reminding them of the event. It makes it very easy for them to be like, yeah, that makes sense. I'll do it. Now, how to deliver this to someone who makes more money than you? So sometimes what happens is as you're talking to these bigger business owners, you're gonna be talking to people who are like multimillionaires, uh, decamillionaires, um, very 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 headstrong types of people, right? So ideally. You're asking questions in the beginning to find the urgency that they are already thinking about, okay? The more money someone makes, the more headstrong they usually are. So you need to use logic, okay? You can't just make up stuff. Like, you can't just make up, like, random deadlines or just reasons, right? It has to be their reasons, and you have to be able to reinforce those reasons throughout the call so it just makes more of, like, a logical train, right? The more money someone makes, the, the more easier it is for them to make a logical decision. In a lot of cases, it's not always that they're going to make a best decision, but they're more logical the more money they're making. It's also why I encourage you guys not to go after like independent contractors because they still think like a civilian in a lot of cases rather than as an actual business owner, right? The, if someone's under six figures per year, they're still thinking like a regular person. Now, once they start getting like 250, 300, 500K per year plus, now they start thinking more of like a logical business owner. They do investments for their business to help their business like move forward. Okay, next is going to be like scarcity. So scarcity is more about your availability and like there's it's more about like limitation, right? So i.e., for example, you only have so many clients you can take on, right? This can be an arbitrary number. This can also be like a very logical, like real number. So like use your limited capacity to your advantage. If you're working a, a nine to five while starting your business, you probably don't have a million hours per week or even per month that you can just give towards doing like these services. So for example, let's say they only have like 20 hours a week that you can spend on client work and then let, so basically just like let people know that you only have a set amount of hours. Okay, left to dedicate to cleanups because you only do X, Y, Z cleanups. Let's say three cleanups at a time since they're extremely time time intensive. Okay, so when I say like three cleanups, like, okay, so like imagine that a cleanup is going to take you about, we'll say like six hours per week to kind of do it until you get it done, right? Now, this is just an arbitrary number. It can be a million hours a week, it can be like one hour a week. I'm just saying for this example. So if you only have 20 hours per week and you dedicate to actually doing client work, that means you can only take on three 
three, three point one cleanups, right? Because six times three is gonna be eighteen hours per week. So you only have three spots, right? That's something you can utilize in your conversation because you don't have that many, right? If they're serious about getting started, then they can utilize it and just move them forward really, really quickly. So how to deliver this as the same thing for like a tax plan. Let's say you can only do like XYZ tax plans because you only want to bring on like five people. You only want to do five hours worth of like onboarding calls um, per, per week, right? So that means you only can take on five clients a week, 20 clients in a month, right? But let people know that. You can even put an arbitrary number. So let's say that you can take a million tax plans. I would say I only do three. Like you can actually make it a conscious decision to only do X, Y, Z to make sure that you can like, you know, maintain your level of service and your ability to like be small and to be very, very um, easy for to work with your clients. You don't want to get like crazy. So how to deliver this scarcity without coming across as fake, okay? Tell the truth. Do not add any inflections to your voice. Say just like a matter of fact, okay? Keep in mind, this is all about preparation. You need to practice this stuff before the call. You need to know intimately what is your actual capacity. Can you work 30 hours a week? Can you work five hours a week? Like, what is that actual capacity? So then you know how much time you actually have left in order to be able to like service the client, right? And then once you know this, you just tell people about it. It's just like, yeah, I only have X, Y, Z spots. I, I don't have like a million, a million hours I can do. I'm not a huge firm that has like 20, 35 um, contracts underneath me, right? So tell the truth. You don't have to make it seem like this. Like even if you have an 100 hours um, per week that you can give away, 100 is still a limited capacity. Utilize it to your advantage. Okay, next is going to be reframing. So it's going to be a little bit intermediate to advanced. Uh So the only difference between a beginner and advanced person is the number of times they practice and the number of times they've done in real life. So, right. So you're, maybe you might be starting as a beginner, but what's going to get you to the intermediate level is going to be um, this kind of stuff and just practicing and then doing a couple of times um, on real clients. Now, keep in mind, you don't need to be advanced in order to like, you know, hit six figures in your business. You don't need to be advanced, hit seven figures in your business. Um, right. Cause like the, the, the better your skill set is, the less consultation calls you need. But if your skill set on sales is not really that that huge, you just get more leads using more marketing, right? So it's kind of like a trade off and kind of like a balance. I prefer to, to get better at sales, so you don't have to do as many consultation calls, right? Our students on average sign up between like forty five to like seventy five percent people that speak to on their consultation calls, right? But that's just because like, we practice sales, right? That's just a natural occurrence when you start getting good at sales. You don't need a million calls, right? And then with the way we price it, it generally only takes between about seven to about 13 um, clients in order to get to like six figures per year. So, you know, just get good. So keep in mind, reframing is, these, these are, reframes are, are very similar to like word tracks. So it's like, it's causing a person to zoom out of the present moment to think about life if things continue exactly as they are. So in order to reframe, you need to be at least on common ground or slightly above them in terms of status, expertise, knowledge, and slash or life. Okay, keep in mind. So one reason why I say like how to do this to people who are making more money is because oftentimes if you're going to be asking someone for five grand per month, which is more than what maybe your business makes, they're probably making more money than you, right? So in some cases, some people equate like how much money they make and how much business, you know, their business does to where they are in their position in life, right? So in some cases, you you might you might be here, they might be up here, right? So you have to find the place that you can at least be level to them. So it could be your experience in accounting, bookkeeping, or tax, right? So now you're at a good level or you're way up here, right? But utilize, it could be status, it could be like social status, like maybe in your church, if you guys both go to the same church, you're like an elder at your church and they're like, you know, a new member, right? So you're just looking for these places, but at least be on common ground in some sort of way. And that's what we do inside of our question and answer or getting the, you know, the three-dimensional types of things, right? Because they tell you the three-dimensional aspects aspects of their life, that means they at least see you on a common ground, then again, you just need to like have that common ground or at least be a little bit higher than in order for this stuff to work. Also keep in mind, word tracks and reframes are not pickup lines. Most people like, like especially like if, you're, if you're younger, right? You hear about pickup lines. You think, you know, you just say a phrase and the other person magically falls in love with you. And it's not like that, you know? Word tracks are more to help you move someone forward in a conversation who's already interested in working with you. It's just a compact and organized way to move the relationship along um, more quickly, right? So 
let's actually kind of break one down. So I'll break down a very simple one. So first, you got to understand that in order to do a reframe, there's generally a couple of, of key spots a reframe is. So number one is going to be calming situation down. Number two is asking misdirection. Number three is going to be like framing. And then number four is going to be closing. So let me actually put this in a little bit different. Reaction question, um, reframe the belief. And it's going to be like, uh, after that, it's going to be closing question. Basically, a mini temp check. Okay, so very, very simple. I'll give you an example. So let's say someone says, oh, I don't have any time to kind of like do this, right? And we've already, we've already understood that it's not necessarily that they can't devote any more time. It's just that they don't have very much and they think that they need like 30 hours a week to devote to this when really they only need about like 10 minutes, 20 minutes um, per week to do this, right? Or even just 20, 20, 20 minutes just period just to do the onboarding call and we'll take the rest. So it's like, okay, you know, no problem. Yeah, I guess when you say like 100%, I guess like, what do you mean by that? They tell you. And yeah, I totally understand where you're coming from. And I mean, you usually can't be like 100% on everything at the same time, right? You can't be all this parent, partner, employee, business owner, and working out at the same time, right? The only thing we can do is we can try to do our best with what we have and move forward. You know, wouldn't you agree? And, you know, wouldn't you agree that it's at least like better to do, you know, even just 10 minutes a day rather than just not do anything at all until like the perfect time arrives? You know, say yes or no. And they say yes. It's like, okay, well, I guess like, what do you feel you need to do in order to make sure you can take advantage of the time that you do have so you get the skills needed to reach your goals? Okay. So this, this one says skills need to reach your goals. This can be used for, uh, it can be used for tax planning. It can be used for QuickBooks training. Just like change out this underline word based on like what you're, you're selling. This can also be used for like, um, if you're selling a, uh, course, mentorship program, just anything that you have, right? Just change out that word. Um, cool. So let me explain what we just did. Okay. So number one, we calm them down slightly by asking like to basically repeat themselves. Most times if someone gives an objection, they're expecting to like hound them, right? Or they're kind of in fear mode. So don't hound them. Just sit back and relax. Next thing is going to be working at the same time. I'm putting the phrase working in because it's generally been like ingrained in most people's minds, especially on like all those like infomercials. If you have a 10 minutes per day, you can work out. If you have a bow flag, it's only take 10 minutes per day, right? So working out can be associated with 10 minutes per day or not a lot, right? Because most people agree like it's better to do a little bit of something rather than just like one, uh, like a thousand percent of something one time and like never do it again. So a little bit of consistency over time gets better results than like one day of like blasting off. Next is going to be, I say, move forward, okay? So all we're trying to do is get them to want to take the next step. We don't want them to think about 10 years or after the cleanup. We just want the next step. That's all we're doing. It's the next step. After that, closing question. Um, based on the close, when you're closing, you want it to be their idea. You don't ever want to be like, okay, do you want to sign up with me right now this second? Why don't you want to sign up with me right now this second, right? Whenever you're talking about specifically your your service or like doing something with you, again, you're pushing your agenda. You're not trying to push your agenda. You're trying to give them clarity so they can understand, right? Because most people, if they get on the call, they they want to make a change in their accounting, bookkeeping, or tax situation. They want to make a change. It's just there's a lot of mental fogs that maybe have stopped them from doing this in the past that you're having to help them clear this fog in order to see, okay, it's not that far of a gap. It's not that big of a deal. It's not going to take me a million hours a day. It's not going to be that hard. It's just, just move forward just a little bit. It's not even that much money compared to what they're already making, right? So again, to make it not sales, it needs to be their idea. So like when they say like, what do you need to do? It's like, oh, I need, I need to get this uh, tax plan going or I need to get this cleaned up. Okay, cool. So, you know, if I want, if you want, I can send you an invoice, right? So they've said, I need to get this thing done. Based on that, you can do a two, you can do a two things. Sometimes if you, if you feel like they're really ready to go, all right, cool. Can I send an invoice? So they get started. Or you can say, are you sure? And they're going to be like, yes, yes, I'm sure. Or you could even do, um, what was the other one I like to do? Um, well, why? Well, I mean, you don't have to, I guess like, why do you feel that you should do that, right? And that's a little bit more reverse psychology. And it kind of gets them to like dig it their feet in a little bit more into like now they're they're really like shifting. It's like jujitsu, right? So it's like you're pushing, you're pulling, and then you're using their weight against them in order to like make things going. Um, 
cool. So I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm going to save these for a little bit um, later and probably in another subsequent module. So hopefully you enjoy this. Hope you learned something new. If you want some help growing your business and your income so you can start living a life of freedom without having to go through a lot of different struggles that cause most people to fail, click the link either above or below the video to see if I can help you. So some people wait to do this and like they end up just like running out of steam. Like most people, like you don't understand, like if you're going to be starting a business, it's all about your energy. And if your energy gets too low and you think, oh, I can't do this, most people quit. Like it's just like the gym, right? So if you want to make sure that while you're actually excited, while you think that this is possible for you, just go ahead and book a call. See if you can get some help, you know, because <clears throat> like the worst thing can happen is we do the call and you find out you get some clarity, you know exactly what you need to do. Also, if money's tight, like we have different payment partners that can help get you funded so you can get your foot in the door to start the program, then just get off to the races, right? You don't have, don't feel like you have to have like a million dollars in order to do this. Like just if you have, you know, at least above like a 640 credit score and then, you know, and you have a little bit of money you can put down, generally our payment partners can help you get funded so you can get off to the races and get started. So if that's you, I'll see you on the call. If you're not quite ready, that's okay too. I'll see you inside the next video. Take it easy. Talk to you soon. Have a good one.